I heard that the um, some people use the tagline small cars, big racing. And from what I've seen, I definitely, definitely agree. So Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media. Today we're going to talk about the MX-5 Cup series and this was actually a special request we received through our Instagram account so yes please definitely let us know if you want us to cover a specific series or race or specific moment of a race you can let us know through our socials YouTube account or on our website we even have Google Forms you can fill out to let us know the specifics of what you want us to talk about as we usually do when we cover a new racing series we will talk about what when where and anything else that we come across that we thought might be interesting to you. So let's get started. What is the MX-5 Cup Series? The MX-5 Cup Series is a single make championship sanctioned by the International Motorsports Association, IMSA, here in the US. So basically they take MX-5 road cars from the Mazda Hiroshima factory in Japan. They transport them all the way to Daytona, Florida to their engineering development partner at Fleece Performance. And there they will remake them. So Fleece Performance will take a brand new club trim level white vehicle, install a rolling cage on the inside. And then after the installation of the cage and the new paint, then the car is assembled with over 250 race car specific parts that will improve handling, endurance, safety, and power specifically designed from and to professional race car drivers and engineers. Where is the MX-5 Cup Series happening? They have seven different stops on each of the stops. They have two races in total. Typically it's a support type of series. So the first one or the first two races that happened were at the Rolex 24 at the Daytona International Speedway. The next one is the next two races are happening during the 12 hour at Sebring endurance race. And then this year, actually for the first time in 17 years, they're going up north to Canada for um, two of the races in July, from July 12th through July 14th. When does the Mazda Cup Series happen? It happens from January all the way through October. As mentioned, they have seven different stops with two races each, and each of the races is 45 minutes in total. So it's perfect size, it's not too long, and from what I've seen and read online, lots happened in the 45 minutes because they're all the same make they have the same engine still on the inside the cars are really close together they do a lot of they use the bump draft technique a lot so they're super super close to each other so there's a high risk of bumping and incidents happen and things happen up until the last lap. So the first race that happened was in January, January 24th through the 26th. And the last races will happen October 9th through the 11th. So you have 14 races spread out through the year from January all the way through October. Now that we covered what, when, where, let's talk about some of the notable drivers and past season winners. First off, I want to mention Jared Thomas, who won not only last season in 2023, but also season 2022. And that makes him the first driver in 17 seasons to win back to back, which is absolutely incredible because it just also shows that the entire field is packed with high quality, high skilled drivers, that it is so close that it changes literally up till last year, it has changed every season the winner. And then since we've already had two races, I just want to point out the winner of the first race was Gresham Wagner. And the winner of the second race that happened at the Rolex 24 was Nate Cicero. Currently, um, Gresham Wagner is leading the overall standing, but as we know, it's only been two races so far, so I'm sure lots can happen by the end of the season. Let's talk about what do you get for winning at the MX-5 Cup Series. So first of all, I want to point out that there's a point system. The first place winner of the race earns 350 points, second, 320, third, 300, fourth, 280, and fifth, 260 points. 
And then after that, every place afterwards gets 10 points less. So that's the overall pointing system. However, there's a couple ways to earn bonus points. So the fastest lap will get 10 bonus points. The person who led the most races overall gets 10 additional points. And the person who started in pole for each race gets an additional 10 bonus points. In the field this year we have 29 drivers and five teams are represented. Teams also have the opportunity to earn points towards the championship. However, because there are only five teams but 29 vehicles on the track with some teams having several drivers on the track, only the top two scoring vehicles for each team earns points. Not only do their drivers receive points, but of course they also receive money when they win the different types of races and the overall championship. This year, the overall purse that's available for winnings is roughly $1.2 million. And it is divvied up in different ways, but essentially the first place for every race earns $6,000 and the overall championship winner earns $250,000. And then they also have shootout scholarships available with the first place winning $110,000. One last thing I wanna point out about the overall field of drivers is that it is fairly diverse in age. There are people or drivers young as 16 years of age, and I saw several drivers that are also 40 plus, so 49 years of age, which I also think is really cool to see that there's a, a range of ages. There's also several women that are participating, which I also love to see, of course. There's also one more driver I want to specifically point out, just because we have a history of iRacing and also talking about the Gran Turismo movie on this channel. So Glenn McGee, who's 33 years old, has earned or developed all of his racing skill originally through sim racing, and he made his debut at the MX-5 Cup in 2016. So I thought that was just an interesting little nugget that I wanted to share with you guys. So what do you need to participate in the MX-5 Cup series? First of all, you need a current and valid IMSA membership. Secondly, you need an IMSA MX-5 Cup driver's license. The minimum age for that is 15 years old. You can apply for that through the IMSA website. You could potentially be even younger than 15 years old, but that would need special approval through the IMSA and it would need proof of extensive racing experience up to then. You also need to pass a physical exam and an impact test, which is a concussion test. Additionally, your team must also hold an IMSA MX-5 Cup entrance license. All of the licenses you can apply for on the IMSA website. The fee for the IMSA MX-5 Cup driver's license is $950 for the entire season, and the license that need to be held by your crew is also $950 for a season. You can also purchase a premium package, which is $2,500, which includes five annual crew credentials, two single event credentials, and also two annual parking passes. For more details, definitely check out the MX-5 Cup website, which we'll link below in our description. This is everything I wanted to share with you guys about the MX-5 Cup racing series. It seems like such a, such a fun event. I've seen some of it on YouTube, which you can definitely check it out on YouTube as well. The Race Our YouTube channel posts the entire races for you to watch, and IMSA TV streams them live dur during the actual event, so definitely check them out. I've been seeing online that a lot of people are very passionate about the MX-5 Cup series because it is high intensity for the entire 45 minutes of the race, mostly because the, they have pretty much um, closed pack driving, so the drivers are really, really close together. So accidents can happen pretty quickly or they bump into each other and then that changes the order. Just at the last Rolex 24 race, during the last lap, there was a big carfuffle which ended up changing the overall race winner for that day. That is also a little bit of a risk of the MX-5 Cup Series just because they're a little bit, I guess, more accident prone or things can happen. So fixing those things, of course, costs money, which has happened previously for racers or drivers 
to opt out of the season midway through because they just can't afford to continue on, which is definitely a bummer. The MX-5 Cup Series is considered to be one of the more cost-effective or cost-efficient um, series out there. However, it has definitely also gone up in price over the last couple of years. From what I've read, several years ago, you could have gotten a race track-ready vehicle or at around like 50K. Now it's more to 100K. However, other people argue also that now that the purse is higher, that cost for the vehicle is reasonable. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you think it's still a cost-effective series? Maybe com comparatively, yes, but what do you think? Have you ever watched one of these races before? I heard that the um, some people use the tagline, small cars, big racing. And from what I've seen, I definitely, definitely agree. I highly recommend checking it out. I, I'll put a link to the last race in the description below so you can check it out. And all I have left to say is thank you so, so much for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe. And as per usual, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.